is there anything you would change about me? In retrospect, there is an appropriate response to this question from your girlfriend of three months, and that is to search high and low for a sharp stick on which to impale yourself, because in my experience, that's the easiest route out of this question. From an early age, lies and liars are vilified in the minds of children. Therefore, children are led to believe that if they tell the truth, they'll be universally praised and well-liked. This is a falsity. The world hates truth-tellers and loves liars. Liars tell the listener what they want to hear. Idiots, like yours truly, tell the truth. Lisa Hartwick was fresh off the farm when we met at Trinity College in Omaha. I was a sophomore, a child, with a lot to learn about women. My old man probably thought he prepared me adequately, but he also thought he understood women, so he was generally delusional. In his stories, the women are all tens and throw themselves wildly at him while he remains cool and my mom rolls her eyes. Those stories and James Bond movies fail to prepare me for the intricacies of the female brain. First of all, Trinity girls aren't really like Bond girls, and well, I wasn't much like James Bond. Trinity girls are innocent, delicate, religious creatures who may never have stepped foot outside Nebraska. Case in point, Lisa Hartwick. We hit it off quickly, but it took me a month to convince her to be my girlfriend. However, after meeting her folks and getting their approval, I was in. Her folks loved that I'd also grown up on a farm, and I called her dad sir, and those were pretty much the requirements. <laughs> we were inseparable for a few weeks. I'd take her cruising in my Mustang GT, and she'd watch my basketball games. And in college, those things and 5'9 and with a rockin' 19-year-old body is really all one can hope for. For the first time in my life, I was smitten and dated. I couldn't believe my good fortune. Now, I don't want to place all the blame for my emotional shortcomings at my parents' feet, but at age 20, I was still strongly under their influence. Their ideals had etched an indelible impression upon me. They were extremely critical of potential mates for my siblings and I, with a list a mile long of things that should be present or absent in a future spouse. And I had not yet learned to differentiate between defects of character and mild annoyances. I also believed in brutal, unfiltered honesty, a stance I've since revised as I hope to remain on this planet as long as possible. <laughs> So when Lisa asked me if there's anything I'd change, to, I'd change about her, I wish that I'd just lied, that I'd taken a softer stance on honesty while I fulfilled the more noble aim of withholding emotional trauma from a young girl. But alas, it wouldn't really be a story if that were the case. <laughs> the thing is, there was something that bothered me. It had bothered me for the full eight weeks of our relationship. <laughs> It was easily fixable, had nothing to do with her character, and therefore seemed like something that she would embrace as constructive criticism. <laughs> she would change, be thankful for the honest feedback, and go on her way an enlightened individual. You're welcome. <laughs> so I said it. Babe, uh, you know how sometimes Get a little hair on your upper lip. <laughs> what? She gave me a chance to back out. I proceeded forward. <laughs> you know how you get a little hair right there, touching her upper lip, lip as if to illustrate the point. <laughs> I have a mustache. No. Oh, jeez. No. Uh, just you know. A little hair there. I, 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 I'm leaving. Now here again, had things gone differently, it still wouldn't be much of a story, but it got worse. Lisa went straight to her prayer group, remember, religious college, and relayed our con recent conversation 
verbatim to the group of four or five girls who already didn't care for me. <laughs> Getting past a couple friends isn't usually a problem because 19 year old girls will sell out anyone in the, on earth if, he's some, if they're dating somebody that they think they could marry. <laughs> However, the communication chain didn't stop there. The prayer group called her brother Derek, another non-fan of mine, and told him all about his baby sister's boyfriend. Derek immediately then called her parents, relaying the recent conversation verbatim. I went from golden boy to sex offender in 10 minutes. <laughs> Thankfully, she called to tell me what happened. I had expected to make some dating errors, but this far surpassed even my own lofty expectations. It took a lot of convincing for her to meet me face to face, and when I saw her, I knew why. Along her upper lip was a trail of blisters. She'd taken my words to heart, and not having waxed before, he did it too hot, scarring her upper lip. So now I was responsible for not only wounding her emotionally, but also disfiguring her physically. I felt like garbage. I got her to go out with me one last time, bringing a dozen roses which brought tears to her eyes as I pleaded for one more chance. She accepted. I was back in. Her friends, brother, and parents refused to speak with her, and she still took me back. She said, just kidding. <laughs> this could have been the start of a firing romance, but it wasn't. After two weeks of fighting, I went to pick her up on Friday night when she told me her brother Derek wanted to talk to me. Oh, no. I suppose if we'd been getting along, I might have gone through the torture, but given the circumstances, I wasn't about to go over to his house. I broke up with her on the spot, hoping to never cross paths with anyone in her family again. Fast forward two years. I'm interviewing with a wealthy real estate developer who is on the board of my college. After an enjoyable 45 minute conversation, I prepare to leave with my future secure. When the developer says, have you met our new salesman, Derek? Still waiting for that call back. <laughs>